love. Welcome to Transmission Tuesdays here on the Libran Key. These are transmission messages of a cosmic or galactic nature for the highest and the greatest good of the Elsh Collective, empaths, lightworkers, starseeds, and healers. Awakened and awakening souls know that if this message has found you or you have found it, that there is something here for you. That is always the intention that I put into these messages. We have the energies of Commander Ashtar here with us. I'm working with blue kyanite for this particular reading and message. And I'm also going to be popping some cards at the end here from the Star Seed Oracle deck. Okay. Commander Ashtar, um, this is interesting. He's coming in. He's not giving me much. He just wants me to really press the record button and go. He wants to speak about the energetics of our time, the energetics of our time, and specifically the energies, the light codes, the frequencies that are hitting Mama Gaia, the shifts in the Schumann resonance. So that's going to be a big part of this is what he's showing me. He actually wants me to pop a card right now. He's so this is interesting. I'm just making a note of this. So I, he's speaking to some conflicting information that may be confusing us out there, specifically with regard to, um, well, this is interesting. He, I have to be careful with what I say here simply because of, well, for lack of a better way of putting it, things that are being um, not allowed to be spoken publicly, or I should say not necessarily allowed, but that are, he's saying, yeah, being um, blocked or and I'm using these words really specifically, 222 on the counter as I say that. Yeah, he wants to speak about the manipulation, the artificial, thank you, Commander Ashtar, the artificial manipulation of time and space, of energy, of certain kinds of experiments being done with regard to um, trying essentially to create what is natural from an artificial vantage point, okay? So there is conflicting information, energies out there with regard to these particular things that are going on. Also, especially conflicting information around the solar flares and what they are doing. Um, specifically with regard to, he wants to address the negative or fear inducing, as how he's showing it to me and saying it to me, the fear inducing uh, perspectives or timelines that are being propagated is how is what he's saying. Um, moving forward with regard to these things. Because essentially, these frequencies are, they are higher in nature than what we are used to here on Mama Gaia. We are, however, receptive to, receptive to them. Remember, he's saying that we are all source energy, and source energy is the ultimate energy creation there is. So, this is nothing to be, there's nothing to be feared of. There's nothing to be scared of when it comes to these kind of energies. What is happening though, is that they are unprecedented and that that can be very confusing for people. And it's also doing a number um, on us when it comes to our physical avatars, our physical temples, our temples of being, okay? Um, and this can be very discombobulating to some, hence the need to really be focusing on our physical 
bodies right now and making sure that we are tending to them, making sure that they are nourished. He's literally showing me, I'm seeing from another deck right now, but this is very similar just to give you sort of a visual of what he's showing me. I'm seeing the, um, oh, it's that card from the Work Your Light Oracle. You know what? I'm going to get it. Just give me two seconds here. He's showing me this particular energy, and this was with regard to the empath, if I'm not mistaken. But I'm seeing this as you actually sitting in a temple. So he's showing me nature, Mama Gaia, as the temple in which we are able to replenish our nervous system is what he's saying to me, our physical bodies. This goes back to the energy. Yeah, it's the get grounded card here. So he's showing me something very similar to this card, but I'm actually seeing these trees as temples. They are coming out as columns and temples. This is how important it is for us to be grounded right now because when we are grounded, we are centered. And when we are centered, we are less, we are much less likely from a nervous system point of view, is how he's showing it to me. We are much less likely to be swayed, fear-mongered, to allow insecurities, fears about what is going on to get the best of us. Okay? Really simple, really straightforward message he wants to bring through here. Because there are people who are, seem to be, is what he's showing me, confused about what's going on and listening to other people who they may deem no better than they do with regard to what's going on with the solar flares. Um, and let's just say if there's any kind of vestiges of fear there, you know, he really wants to clear that up really wants to clear up the fact that there is nothing to be feared here. Okay. Now he's talking about this. I want to make this absolutely clear from a physical perspective. Um, also from a perspective of what could potentially go wrong, right? Because there is that kind of consciousness that's floating around right now. We're hearing a lot about how this can affect the He's showing me electronic grid, right? He's showing me that there is a lot of also fear mongering out there with regard to like doomsday. I keep on hearing that phrase. That phrase has been coming up a bit. Doomsday prophecies and things like that. Okay. Um, it's always important to be prepared. It's always important to have the things that you need that you may need, depending on where you are, depending on where you're living. It's always important to make sure that you're tapping into your own intuition, right? With regard to what is going on around you, but that does not mean you come from a place of fear. It's simply awareness is what he's showing it to me. The same way that you are aware of certain things in your day-to-day -day life. Like when you cross, <laughs> this analogy of the street again is coming through. When you cross the street, okay? When you cross the street, thank you, Lazar, for this. When you cross the street, you're going to look both ways. That is awareness. That doesn't mean when you approach the street, you're freaking out. Let's just, let's just sink into that feeling for a moment. Of being at a street, a busy street, looking both ways and determining when it's safe to cross. Simply being aware of your surroundings. That's it. Not living in a constant state of, you know, fight, flight, or freeze when it comes to all of this. Or any kind of fawning for that matter. Okay, he wants me to pop a card now from the Starseed Oracle. As I crack open the deck perspective, zooming out, None of this matters. Common ground, okay? Taking a bigger perspective, he's actually showing me beautiful image here of Mama Gaia, right? This planetary body, this planetary consciousness, and how she is being affected and how she is transmuting 
the solar flares, the light code energy, she herself also going through the same ascension process that we are. That is why we are here to facilitate in this, okay? Awakened and awakening souls, empaths, light workers, star seeds, and healers. I know that each and every one of you watching this right now, that that will resonate with you, okay? Forge, don't follow, pave a new path, be the leader you wish you had. Okay, so he wants us to bring an image to mind or a feeling about a true leader and what a true leader is. A true leader is brave and courageous. A true leader may feel those feelings of fear, but knows how to transmute them. Feel those feelings of fear and is aware as to whether or not is this a fear that's coming up that is perhaps a projection of some sort? Is this a fear that is because it's coming from the unknown? This is a new uh, journey, right? Many leaders will go into the unknown, right? Many leaders are explorers. Or essentially all leaders in a sense with regard to this ascension process because it's unprecedented, right? Mama Gaia has not gone through this kind of ascension process before. She's definitely gone through cycles, 100%. In terms of us experiencing the way things are going right now, yeah, this is definitely a new energy, new, and it's unprecedented with regards to, he wants me to clarify here, the frequencies that are hitting Mama Gaia. Okay, because he's showing me we've also been through these type of experiences before and that if you especially resonate as being a light worker or a starseed here on a journey or a mission, you've done this. You've been through experiences like this before. So there's a lot, there's, there's something even deeper going on here with regard to claiming that soul blueprint, claiming that ancestry, for example, claiming the path that you came here on, essentially is what he's saying to me, okay? And he's also directing me for each and every one of us to do this in a sacred space, to, to get into a sacred space, get grounded, get centered, and to meditate and ask your trusted guides, okay? Those who are here for your highest and greatest good, to ask them to explain or show you what these light codes, what this ascension energy, this frequency is specifically doing or meaning to you. Because we have what's going on collectively, right? But then we also have what's going on at an individual level. How is this affecting your life? What is it you need to focus on, perhaps? Okay. He's... Yeah. This is, there's a couple of things that are coming through here. I just wanna, okay, so he wants me, before I get into the cards, to really come back to our energy is everything right now. And he keeps on giving me this phrase, the ill manipulation of time. The ill manipulation of time. He's talking about timelines here. He's speaking to something that we spoke about in the last video, I think that was posted. Was it Feeling Fridays? The highest timeline? I believe so. I think it was the last one. Let me just go back to my notes here one second here. It was the last Transmission Tuesday's message, wasn't it? Yes. Okay. That's why these that's why this imagery of the street is coming back in and Lazar wanting to bring that message through too here, okay? He just wants me to remind us of that. 
He wants me to remind us of the ill manipulation of timelines. And he's showing me the solar plexus right now, our gut instincts, our intuitive aspect. Now for some of us, now he's speaking specifically, he's showing me the third eye now and the solar plexus. We're going to intuit things from a different point of view with regard to our own bodies and our own energy centers. Okay, take that into consideration. But he's showing me that these are two centers of discernment in the body, in the energetic body, okay? Two centers of discernment within the solar plexus and within the third eye, okay? Whenever you're coming across something that seems a little suspect to you with regard to a timeline trajectory, something that you may come across with regard to the news, mainstream media, if you're even still watching it to the degree that you are. Even he's showing me specifically, he's going back to what we spoke about in the last Transmission Tuesday's message with regard to the scrolling, you know, the social media, the platforms that we are on, the type of, oh, and he's also showing me again the streaming platforms, okay? Like, you know, again, choose whichever one uh, you can think of here. There are ill manipulated timelines that are being fed to us. So be aware of it. And when you feel that, you you have to kind of tune. It's the body showing me the body again is a barometer. The energy centers is a barometer. Where are you feeling that twinge? Where are you feeling the twinge in your body that something seems off here? Or that this is fabricated. There is something here that seems inorganic that's trying to be pushed. Be aware of it simply. And he's showing me the energy of transmutation around this as well. And this is where um, Lazar wants to come in for this too with regard to that golden energy and the golden pyramid. This golden pyramid of light energy. The transmutation of this energy through the golden pyramid. Also understanding that practices, shielding practices, energetic practices where we are transmuting energy is incredibly important in all of this. Essentially, it's about not consenting to this timeline. That is the bottom line. A timeline that is being presented to us, and he keeps on bringing back that phrase, doomsday, doomsday. Doomsday is a fear-mongering energy word. Okay? that there is a whole entire consciousness around that word. And as we begin to shift in consciousness, these consciousnesses no longer apply. We still see them, though, working or trying to work on a certain trajectory for whatever agenda or purposes, okay? Simply be aware of it when it comes across your stratosphere is what he's saying. Acknowledge that this is faulty. Acknowledge that this is an ill manipulation. Acknowledge that this is something trying to be pushed that is artificial, that is not real, that is not true, that is not in alignment essentially with the highest and greatest good collectively. Okay? And... As Amanda Ellis loves to say, cancel, clear, delete, you know, it's like the same thing. You want to essentially look at that and go, not in this reality. I do not consent to any of this. He really, really wants to bring that through right now. Okay. That can be your new catchphrase. I do not consent to any of this, any of this messaging, any of this uh, ill manipulation of time, artificial manipulation of time. I do not consent. Okay. Thank you, Commander Ashtar. And thank you, Lazar, for bringing that back in. Okay. If you want so, if you would like an extended, I'm actually thinking we might do a separate message on this because we've touched upon Lazar and the pyramid before a couple of times, but I feel like he wants to bring through an exercise some kind of meditation around that. If you are interested in that, please leave a comment below. It may come through another message is what he's showing me. Okay. 
Star Keeper at the bottom of the deck. We've got a lot of cosmic energies coming through for this. Cosmic Ancestors, seed the light by staying grounded. Again, staying grounded. Get grounded. I'm going to put these two right next to each other because there's something in their energy that's really mirroring right now. Okay. You see all this cosmic information coming right down as we get grounded, get grounded. Also, a very good way to be able to understand the difference between organic and inorganic timelines is to be very connected to Mama Gaia, is to be very grounded and connected to her energetically, you know? Um, and you can do this through practices, through meditation, of course, where you reinforce that grounding cord in a way to her, right? Um, it's, and I also feel to source as well. However, that making sure that you're tethered, okay? Making sure that you're tethered in both directions. Deep cellular healing, we always are connected, by the way, but I'm just reinforcing that, okay? As an energetic practice is what I mean by that. Deep cellular healing, Arcturus energy, physical and emotional healing. That is exactly what's happening with these light codes. This is Arcturian energy coming through as well. This temple felt looks like the temple that I was being shown by Commander Ashtar that we are sitting in with this get grounded card. That's what it felt. That's what it felt like. Okay. A lot of emotional, a lot of physical healing going on right now. A lot of purging of fears, and that's why the fears are coming up because we are purging them. And Lazar is coming back to talk about the transmutation of those fears because energy doesn't really, like energy never d disappears, right? There's a, there's a power in transmuting that energy into something else, okay? Taking that fear and transmuting it into love, okay? Taking that fear and transmuting it into a deeper understanding of what is going on taking that fear, calling in your guides to reinforce a deeper connection with your guides, transmuting it into a deeper connection with your guides, for example. Take whatever resonates, okay? Star ancestors, hidden secrets, lost wisdom, look a little deeper. Okay, so... Yeah. There's gonna be... I mean, there are... This is happening. This is a confirmation with regard to a number of things activations happening star ancestors um perhaps you did not know that you were connected to coming up again he keeps on saying your stratosphere which i love um understanding you know this star keeper card is it's it bounces right off of this okay so this is a, this is a big message that wants to come through all about cosmic ancestry. This is about, he even, he's even saying to me a deeper understanding of our connection to source, our uh, point of origin as souls. He's showing me even an, a deeper understanding of our over souls, like a deeper understanding of our soul tribe. Um, cosmic galactic ancestors, soul families, deeper connections with them, deeper understanding. I mean, if you resonate with the Arcturians, this is a huge confirmation for that here. I'm also getting uh, a lot of Syrian energy coming through for this as well, but it could be anything. It's just what's coming specifically through the cards, okay? Um, and of course, Lyrans too with Lazar being here. So that's another uh, energy that's wanting to come in to help with this. The physical and emotional healing, Pleiadian energy, also a big part of that as well. Yeah. And Mama Gaia herself. This is really interesting. Planetary connections that we have too, okay? Planetary consciousnesses all coming in for this. It's through that healing. It's through going deeper. It's through this cellular regeneration that's happening. This is another thing that's happening with the solar flares. We are having a deep level of cellular healing going on with that. So hence the purging, hence all the things coming up, 
to be cleared, to be transmuted. Through that process, we're going to be tapping much more deeply into our star ancestry. And that the, that DNA connection, you know, it's funny because you, you know how we hear about junk DNA? It ain't junk, right? This is what he's saying to me. It's a, it, those are, they're, they're being affected by these light codes and these solar flares, okay? Is what he wants to confirm. Okay, he's showing me now. I'm going to, I'm just going to end off here. I'm getting an image now of a crystal. I'm getting an image of amber. Okay, so he's showing me the energy here of the solar plexus and the sun. Oh, I love that he's bringing this through. Thank you. So exposing your belly and your solar area to the sun. He's even showing me if sunlight isn't available to you, candlelight is good too. Because there's something very activating in this. And I've heard this from many different sources with regard to even just digestion. And this was something that um, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head which particular cultures practice this. He's saying to me it was a unified thing cross-culturally all over the world in terms of our human ancestry and its connection to the sun would expose their bellies to the sun because it was like there's a connection there with digestion and being able to digest things. Um, the sun does something very activating to us simply when we're out in the sun period. But when we expose that area of our body to the sun, it is incredibly significant with regard to what it can do to help us with our physical processes in terms of digestion, but also anxiety is what he's showing me. Um, this is, you know, and we're not talking like sitting for hours and hours. It could just be like for 10 minutes every day, whatever you can, whatever you can get, depending on where you are. Optimally, if you can do it first thing in the morning, because that, or even at noon, kind of when the sun is highest, even at sunset, he's showing me different phases throughout the day. And I'm seeing like a, I'm seeing, um, he's showing me the glyph. I mean, how many things does this glyph represent? Okay. You know, he's showing me this as a body though, like mother earth, you know, um, so connected to the cyclical, to time, to cyclical time is what he's bringing through here. Not artificial time, cyclical time and exposing our, uh, solar plexus to the sun, to solar energies. He's showing me that this can help not just in your own physical digestion and things like that. That is actually helping us to digest and bring in more light codes energy into our bodies to be more easily transmuted for this deep cellular healing to take place. Okay. All right. That's it. I'm going to end it there. Thank you, Commander Ashtar, for being here with us. Thank you to Lazar for coming through again for these messages. I thank you for being here, for sharing your time, your energy with me in this space. I'm sending you so much love wherever you are in love and liberation, always.